All right, we are recording here. Let's go live into Facebook. All these things. All right, welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. So this is Karen Gannat. Karen is a registered holistic nutritionist who specializes also in yoga. She's been leading a practice for over 15 years where she supports people in their nutrition, in their movement, and I'm so excited to talk to you today because I think that this conversation is really important. Uh, in the midst of a pandemic, the conversation around how can we fuel our bodies, bodies in a mindful way is super duper important. And so I thought it would be really poignant for us to have this conversation today to talk about a couple things about how food is fuel for our body and what we can start doing today. What useful tools can we implement now that'll actually make a shift in our immune system that'll perhaps make a shift in our mood and how can we get through this time of panic in a way that will fuel our bodies well and our families well. So I would love to, for you to share a little bit about your background in holistic nutrition and also the yoga piece because I think that's important today too. Okay, awesome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so I have been, well, I first started 20 years ago, um, working in a health food store and I ran, uh, seven health food stores for eight years. Cool. Um, so I have a lot of supplement knowledge and then from there I ended up doing my nutrition degree and I did, uh, my yoga training. And part of what I've specialized in for a while, I worked with eating disorders. Um, but what I've specialized in is working with families and just trying to provide easy tools that one can kind of bring into their home. I've done a lot of kids cooking classes. Um, and then with movement, I believe mind, body, spirit. So what we're doing on our plate is actually very indicative to how we feel inside. Um, so if we're not fueling ourselves, then I question, are we moving our bodies? Like it's all very interconnected. 100%. I love that because I always talk about how the mind leads the body, the body leads the mind, right? Absolutely. Um, so let's start with the food piece, right? When, and I, I spoke with Tracy actually Sagrati yesterday about this, you know, when we are in this situation that we're in a crisis, our body goes into this fight or flight response. And part of that, and I, I, I did a uh, Instagram live the other day about that, this, is that when we are trying to eat in times of panic, we can't actually process the food well. So I would love for you to share from a nutrition perspective, what foods will actually support our bodies in times of stress? And then from a yoga breathwork perspective, how can we actually downregulate that stress response so our bodies can actually digest well? Yeah. Okay. So there's kind of two big parts to that. So the first is the food aspect. What are we eating? Um, so in my training and what I was taught is that, and this is very in line with yoga, is that food has an energy to it. Mm -hmm. So if I am eating a packaged product, it's kind of like a dead product, right? Because it has been processed. If I'm eating a vegetable or something that is more fresh, it actually has a living vibration. So mm -hmm. it fuels us differently. So one I would say is eating whole foods is extremely important. Um, I know a lot, and I personally experience this, my family is, is the anxiety that we're all feeling. Um, and one of my specialties is in mental health. Um, so there are a lot of good foods that we can actually take in to support our nervous system. Amazing. So B vitamins are really important to soothe our nervous system. So things like whole grains um, and not processed flour. I mean whole grains. I mean real oats, um, brown rice those types of things. And then I know there are a lot of people who are trying to avoid um, grains right now just because of dietary restrictions. So even things like salmon, things like seeds um, also have a lot of B vitamins in them. Spinach also does as well. So there are other things. Eggs also are huge if you eat 
that. So um, those are ways that we can easily get B vitamins into our system, which soothes us. And the reality is the foods that we consume affect our mood. So if I'm eating healthy, rich, dense foods, it's going to allow me to feel better. If I have things, and we all do it, we're human, have things like sugar or chocolate or chips right now because we are feeling stressed, mm -hmm. over the course of your day, that's gonna end up making you feel worse in the long term. 100%. So part of me feels like sometimes those things are nourishing for us, but we have to be aware, how do we want to feel? Yeah. And that's the mindfulness and the yoga part is, Am I consciously doing these things? Yeah. So one of the things that I've talked to clients with recently is you have to plan your meals right now. The reality is 100%. we can't go to the grocery store yeah. every day. Yeah. So meal planning is really important. So put in your meal plans things that are going to fill you up. Make sure that you are, you had asked for tools. I'll do that later. But like, mm -hmm. make sure that you have vegetables in every single meal. Yes. That's going to support your nervous system. Yeah. 100%. Um, the second thing that you had asked was digestion. Yes. And the reality is our food does not digest if we are stressed. 100%. Yeah. All of our energy and our human body, and this human body is an amazing thing. All of our things in our human body right now, if we're stressed, all of our energy goes to fight flight. So anything that we do take in, we might not be digesting. Yep. So what things that are important are sitting down to eat. Mm -hmm. As a lot of my clients are mothers, we tend to stand at the island at the kitchen and we're eating like this as opposed to sitting down. Yep. You're not going to effectively digest your food that way. Mm -hmm. So the first rule I teach everybody, sit down to eat. Um, and then in times like this, it is don't have your phone with you. Don't watch the news while you're eating. 100%. Don't if watch are, the news. <laughs> if you're alone, which a lot of people are right now because yeah. of this pandemic, FaceTime. Ask somebody, you know what, can you keep me accountable for lunch and make a lunch date with somebody? Connect. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because I feel... We need to consciously do a lot of things right now. And, and nourishing our body is pretty much the healthiest thing that we can do. Yeah, 100%. So let's, let's talk about some tangible tools right now mm -hmm. in, in, in this conversation. So if somebody is meal planning, you did yeah. say try to insert a vegetable at every meal, yeah. right? What else can they do in terms of like, a lot of people are like, oh my God, what if I have to stock up for two weeks? Like I can't always have fresh fruits or vegetables. I know for me, we buy some frozen stuff so that we can have it readily available. But I would love to hear from you. What are three things people can do in terms of meal planning to set themselves up for success that will help them with the stress response? Okay. Um, that's a good question. So... One of the things is frozen. So that was one thing that I was going to say is there, are, you know, we can get vegetables really in three ways and it's fresh, frozen, canned. Yes. Always, except for tomatoes, always try to get frozen. The problem with that becomes is how do we cook it and make it yummy, yes. right? And so frozen veggies are always going to be better in things like a stir fry or in um, an oven baked dish. So one of the things that I've taught people is make a list of all of your favorite meals and all the foods that are quick, easy, no brainers. Cause right now we're not, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? So in your pantry, make sure that you're stocked up on things like legumes, right? Um, things like canned tomatoes. Yep. Um, for some people, if you have kids, pasta, I mean, you can do so many things. Um, one of the great things, and you can just Google this, is it's called kale pesto. Okay. Um, Weelicious came out with it a long, many, many years ago. Um, and you can actually take kale, put it into little ice cube trays, make this pesto, and put it in your freezer. Right. And then when your kids want pasta, they can have kale pasta. And it's, we call it green cheesy pasta in our house <laughs> uh, because it makes her eat it. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say planning for things that are easy frozen meals, yep. pantry staples, um, 
And, and fresh food, like we do have access to it. And we're right about to hit the season where in Ontario, thank goodness, we're going to start getting fresh produce. So I, I don't think that there should be a fear necessarily around being able to access fresh produce. I love that. Okay. And so let's tap into the fear. So yesterday when I spoke, spoke with Tracy Sagrati, we spoke about breath work before eating a meal. Yeah. right? To down-regulate that central nervous system reaction, tap into the parasympathetic. So what can people do? Even, I mean, I don't think, I think energetically, if you are super stressed, our kids will feed off from that. But I don't think necessarily kids are in this crazy fight or flight stress like parents are right now, like moms and dads, right? Yeah. So what can we do with our children, even to incorporate that conversation that before we sit down for every meal, almost like some people say grace, what can we do to kind of get out of our heads and into our bodies to allow digestion to be as optimal as it can be at this time? So, I mean, and this is where I think if you, if you have a family, you can actually create a ritual and you can get everybody involved. Mm. So let's say if you're a family of four, everybody takes a little piece of it. So maybe it's checking in with your breath. Maybe somebody leads a breath practice, yeah. right? Kids actually love it. I teach a lot of kids yoga and they love breath work. Um, so doing something like that, maybe going for a walk before you sit down to eat, sometimes can clear your head. Yes. Um, even a ritual of setting a table, right? And that's a good thing kids can do. It slows us down. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say doing things like, if we're talking about dinner, what are three amazing things that you did today? Right. Um, and, and having a gratitude practice. Like there's a reason why grace used to be a very big thing at family meals. Right. Um, so why can't we check in and be check in with the things that are positive as opposed to the negative things? Yeah. And you know what? So for all of you listening, maybe we can all insert grace before meals, right? And even if you are not a practicing, practicing Catholic, like I grew up as Catholic, so we would say grace, right? Yeah. But maybe all of us can do that gratitude practice of like, what are we grateful for? Right? Yeah. Because if we are quarantined with our families, a lot of us are safe. A lot of us are eating a meal, right? And maybe we have food on the table that we should really remind ourselves how grateful we are, right? Yeah. And then we can extend that to others because there are, I mean, I know that myself and some clients are supporting other families right now that can't buy meals that we can, right? Yeah. So how can we also bring that conversation, like you said, to like tap into the parasympathetic, down-regulate that stress response? Um, yeah, so, so thank you for that. I think that's really powerful. I also think I'm very big about no screens at any table. I phones, turn off the TV. Yep. Put your yeah. phones away. No phone zone. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that's a really big practice that, you know, some people are maybe doing just automatically now because we have more time to be able to be on our, our devices, but it's a good reminder because you know, some of us aren't used to spending breakfast, lunch, dinner with our entire family all the time. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think it is a really powerful reminder because if you're sitting on CNN all the time, it is overwhelming. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know we spoke about some of the nourishing foods of what we can put in our system, but let's talk a little bit about gut health, right? Because I really believe that this is as good a time as any to build resiliency in our immune systems. And even if we are all quarantining, so hopefully nobody will be infected with the virus, that it is important to build your immune system because that will help you just in the long run with how you are coping in this marathon that we are on in our our central nervous system, right? Yep. So let's talk about some good gut health foods because our gut is said to be our second brain, right? Yep. In emotional yep. standards and resiliency in our lives. So talk to us a little bit about maybe some of the science behind that. And then how can we support that from a place of good nutrition for gut health? Okay. Um, so I mean, it, it is, there are so many studies right now. It's a really fascinating topic about what's happening in our gut. Um, and the reality is it's because it's where we absorb all of our nutrients. Yes. So if your gut isn't healthy, one of the big things is having a leaky gut. So when your gut doesn't actually break down and absorb, if your gut isn't healthy, you're not going to want to absorb your nutrients. 
And two, a lot of our immune system, where it takes all of its, um, where it takes all of its nutrients and functions, is actually in our gut. So if that isn't healthy, then you're not going to optimally have any absorption from your nutrients. So ways that you can help your gut health, um, the first and foremost is drink water. Yes, 100%. Um, you need to be hydrated. Your colon needs you to be hydrated. Otherwise, it is not going to be able to move things through your system. Um, the second is fiber, which you would get based on what I said earlier about having more vegetables. Yes. Um, and then there's the prebiotic and probiotic components. Um, so prebiotic foods will be things that are fermented. Um, one of the things I had mentioned to you, and you can look it up online, but is to make your own things like kimchi or fermented food. Yummy. Um, and now, because we have a little bit more time, it might be fun. Um, last year, I made one that had cauliflower in it, and you actually had to burp it. Okay. So for kids who have like little boys, it might actually be a kind of a fun little thing to do. Okay. Um, I have found that kids sometimes don't love some fermented foods. So sometimes we have to get a little bit more creative with our kids. But as adults, it's really important to try and have a fermented food every day. So that could be something like kimchi, sauerkraut, um, kombucha is really good. Watch how much sugar. Um, but those would be prebiotic things. Yep. Um, and then probiotics, I always say everybody should be on a probiotic supplement. Um, you can still order things online. So I would say everybody in a household needs to be on probiotics. Yeah, I agree. I'm really good with my kids. I'm just not as good with myself. <laughs> That's generally the truth in all yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, good. That's really, really helpful. Um, okay, so I would love for you, like, so one of the things that you're actually taking on in your life, although you already have these amazing designations, is that you're doing your master's right now in psychotherapy. Yeah, it's not my master's. It's another degree. Okay. Um, yeah. So I will get my psychotherapy uh, designation. Amazing. I yeah. think that's amazing. So I would love for you to share a little bit of maybe what you're learning in that space to bring it into this space. What, what do people need to know? Maybe is there one thing that you're like, wow, I see it in nutrition, in yoga, and now with the psychotherapy as a different foundation of what can people take away that they can start doing today that will support them through this uncertain time? Um, I think it's, I think it's really to focus on our mental health and the stories that we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of what I'm learning in psychotherapy is how much uh, for adults that we've programmed into ourselves based on our habits. And sometimes they're not even habits we're aware of. Um, and I feel like it could be something as simple as, um, you know, how I, what I want to eat because it was a family tradition. Right. Um, and maybe trying to change that kind of narrative or I have to look this way or be this way because it's what my family taught me. Mm. Um, and I think part of that, like how I would incorporate yoga is it, it's really about being present with our choices. 100%. Yeah. 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 So, so one thing that I had thought of, um, was the idea of put in a good habit before you take out a bad habit. Yes. Um, so our brain neuroscience shows it's easier for us to go back into negative loops or things that we've done in the past. It's hard to build new things. And so part of it is like, let's start putting in good habits. We have time now. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that then for a second. So the good habit of improving your hydration Right. How can we put that in place and what will that re replace differently than just like drinking less water, you're drinking more? Is that adequate? Or are you saying like you need to input a new habit that's completely different than the one you want to get rid of? No, I think that you can put in any habit you want that's actually effective for you. Like what I've, what I've heard people saying recently is like they've created all these huge things that they want to accomplish being home. I'm like, that's overwhelming. Yeah. Pick one thing. One thing a day, get it done. So whether that be water, one of my clients I was talking to, they drink a lot of coffee, um, especially right now because people are wired, which is not good for your nervous system. No, no, it's not. But one of the things I had said was every time you go to make yourself a coffee, have a glass of water first. It's also a big rule I have with people who are snacking a lot. 
is have a glass of water first. And so that's an easy way that will snowball into maybe some other bad habits changing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's easy. So everybody listening or watching this, take that on. How can you increase your hydration? Glass of water before coffee, glass of water before snack, glass of water before a meal, right? Yes. Yeah. Careful about water before a meal. Right. I you don't want right. to dilute the, the acidic acid. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I, I mean it before snacks because the other thing that I wanted to say was the timing. Like everybody's saying how much my kids want to eat all the time and they're snacking. Um, I was thinking, I was talking to another client about, because she's got little kids, about how to teach her the hands on the clock. And kids right now need structure. Yes. And so let's implement snack time. And they have to look and read it on the clock. Right. Oh, right? And so if we also take that on as adults, then hopefully we won't be running to the fridge because we're trying to numb ourselves. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your wisdom. Um, any last words that, uh, that you want to share with our audience today? Yeah. Be healthy. We're all good. Yeah. We're just trying the best we can. Stay home. <laughs> yeah. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay healthy for sure. Stay, safe. stay, stay positive, positive, right? And, and we're all doing the best we can. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. A lot of people are really hard on themselves right now. No, that's true too. That's yeah. true too. I appreciate you. Thank you, my dear. And you know, for all of you guys watching, if you need support with meal planning because you just feel like it is overwhelming, this is one of the things Karen specializes in. And she, I will include all her details below wherever you're watching this. She is available for you. If you need, you know, a four week meal plan, if we are going to be without kids in school, right? She specializes in doing it for kids and families. So I will include all the details. You can reach out to her. She is completely affordable and it makes so much sense in a time like the present. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. That was great.